And so this is really what we need to remove. And we want to eliminate all of this. Using my lab hand piece, we're gonna remove the sprue. Try and do this. You can see some of the sparking here. On Natalie's case, I actually only used three colors. And so we were able to get a really nice effect from three colors. And I'll show you how we do that. And this alone, and I have made restorations like this alone, this alone is already a great result. This is a polychromatic effect. If all you really needed to do was tone down the brightness or, or lightness of the restoration, this alone is good enough. Welcome to today's office hours. Uh, the topic for today will be staining glaze and finishing our restorations out of the milk. Uh, so I do want to preface all of this by saying the materials that we have developed for the, the fast mill, uh, they are intended to be used right from the mill, right? Uh, everyone's familiar with the now nomenclature. So no oven weight, uh, that's the, the processing of our materials. It's meant to be used from the mill to the mouth. And most of them, and I think in most situations, they definitely are suitable for that purpose. Uh, but what we're discussing today is taking it taking our restorations to the next level. You know, if you have a more aesthetically demanding situation, um, I find especially for maybe a single unit anterior where the patient has maybe more aged teeth, more characterization, uh, as you're probably familiar with our materials, even though they're now products, they are monochromatic. So the advantage that characterization provides for us is we can apply uh, additional colors to it. We can infuse translucency effects into these more aesthetically demanding situations. And we can really, uh, really help our restorations disappear in those more complex cases. So we're going to take a look at a couple cases and then we'll dive into uh, the hands-on component and how we can achieve really lifelike results with our monolithic restorations from the mill. So the case that uh, we'll start you off here. So behind our, our labels here, you can see uh, this was a recent case that I completed. Uh, these are 10 Bruxer aesthetic veneers on the upper. So all of the lowers are natural teeth. And so just giving you an idea of where we started, patient originally had some spacing. So diastema between eight and nine, uh, laterals a little smaller. Uh, in these lateral views, or rather, I have lateral views next, but you can see where we started. She has spacing on either side of the canines. So just looking at her natural teeth, you can see there is a level of translucency along the incisal edges, um, along the proximal areas where the contacts are, and just kind of pay attention to where those areas are of translucency are located. And I wanted to try to mimic that in her restorations. So this is what we ended up with. Uh, again, Bruxer Aesthetic, it is a translucent enough material to match natural dentition extremely well, as you can see here. Uh, but these are from the mill, and you can see along the incisal edges and the interproximal areas, we have that hint of blue, a little bit of gray, and that's all through surface characterization or what we normally term as stain and glaze. So that's my goal for today to take you through how we achieve these results. Now, first starting off with finishing, uh, you can finish these restorations, finishing meaning taking the sprue down, contouring. These are just some of the tools that we really like to use here. And the one that I use most often is what you see on the left-hand side. That's, it's from this company, TCS Thermoplastic Comfort System. It's a green mounted stone. It's called the green mounted stone. What the stone is, it's a silicon carbide. It's a really abrasive material and very long lasting. What else I got for you? Okay, so the system that we're using today, it's this aesthetic system from, called Mio. It's from Jensen Dental. Uh, Mio stands for make it your own. And this kit, I've used for the past several years, and, I, and I've used other systems out there. So far, this has been uh, a wonderful characterization system. 
uh, they call it liquid ceramic. And it's, they're real careful not to label it as staining glaze. I know that our topic of discussion is staining glaze. Uh, I'll probably refer to the technique and what we're doing as staining glaze, uh, but the reason why they differentiate liquid ceramic versus staining glaze is because the composition of this material, you've got pigments in it and you have uh, ceramic with the pigments. And so most stain systems have a much higher percentage of pigment to ceramic. And what the Jensen folks have created here, it actually has a lot more ceramic. So the increased level of ceramic with fewer pigments in it uh, really create a much more, uh, it, it creates a situation where it absorbs light a lot better and it gives a much more natural appearance because we are just putting a layer of color on the most superficial part of the restoration, but we're trying to create um, the illusion of depth through the restoration to, again, mimic natural dentition. So uh, I, I find it works really well. Now, there, you can certainly still overdo it. So the techniques and what we discuss and how we apply it are very similar uh, to other standing glaze techniques and systems. But I just find uh, what they use and, and incorporate to work really, really well. This is that uh, essential, not essential, the TCS finishing burr. This is a silicone, silicon carbide finishing burr. And I'm gonna first take you through the finishing of the sprue. So I intentionally with Bruxer Aesthetic, which this is, Bruxer Aesthetic on full coverage restorations like we have here, usually will have two sprue options. So if you're not sure how to do it, do that or change the sprue, do call into support and they can certainly help you. Uh, but I intentionally left it on the facial and this is something that we do in our anterior course. Uh, but I wanna highlight where the sprue is. So you can see the elevated, the raised part that we separate from the mandrel. It's pretty thin, but there is a raised kind of platform or base. I'm doing a not so good of a job highlighting it, but I'm using my red pencil here. And so this is really what we need to remove. And we want to eliminate all of this. And especially if the sprue is on the facial, you want to be sure that you remove and, and carefully blend it into the line angle, which is really, really important for anteriors. All right, so I'm gonna show you using this TCS burr, using my lab hand piece, we're gonna remove the sprue. I'm try and do this. You can see some of the sparking here. And when we do this, we don't wanna put a lot of pressure on the restoration. Just let the instrument do the work for us. So you can see we're really quickly taking the sprue down. So it's amazing that we can end up with such a pre precise fitting restoration. Uh, but that's just one of the, you know, I hate to use the term error, but it is an error in the milling. It's just the natural engineering of these restorations. So that's the finishing of the crown. So what we're gonna do next, before we just jump straight into uh, st standing glaze or applying our colors, we need to sandblast, and this is just for Bruxer. So for Bruxer aesthetic, if you're staining Bruxer now on, on posterior, you wanna be sure you, you sandblast the restoration. So sandblasting, what that does for us is it's gonna to tone down the shine uh, but that's more of a, a byproduct through to the process. The benefit of sandblasting is it's going to roughen the surface and it's going to allow this, the colors and the glaze to adhere to the surface much better. Let me zoom out a little bit here. This is a, a, a Danville micro etcher. There's a bunch of them out there, but uh, sometimes occasionally, you know, the particles, the particles might get, you know, might get a little clogged. So if I notice it's not sandblasting as effectively, I'll sometimes just give, give the unit a little tap there and continue. All right, so I've got a little pedal I'm pressing on. There's a button on the body of the, the sandblaster. We're using 50 micron aluminum oxide. Uh, this is what the lab uses to sandblast all Bruxer restorations. 
coming out of the lab. Here I've got a you know, little ramekin and a little squirt bottle. We're just gonna give this a little rinse. You know, there might be some of those aluminum oxide particles, any dust. We want a really clean surface. So this is, um, anytime you are, I'm gonna use the term standing, glaze, standing and glazing, uh, you wanna make sure you have a really clean, pristine surface. And that goes for your hands as well. So I'm gonna clean this area here, any aluminum oxide from my hands. And then I'll go ahead and just dry the restoration. We'll eliminate any excess water. All right, so clean restoration is ready to go. So now before we apply the colors, now it's time to get this supported uh, for the oven. It's gonna be for the oven and also for holding the restoration during uh, the application. So I've got a firing peg and then there's a bunch of these out there. The one that we use is from Harvest Dental, it's called Super Peg. Uh, it's a, as you can see, it's a ceramic firing support material. And we're gonna go ahead and fill the restoration to maybe about two, halfway to two thirds, just a little bit, not all the way. And the reason for that is when we seat the peg into the material, we don't want for the material to, the excess to really flow out and then, which could end up on the external surface. Now, it is true with a little bit of space and void there, uh, you could potentially get colors and glaze on the inside. Just be really careful to not let that happen. We've got our crown supported on our firing peg. It's supported with the super peg material. So there's our restoration. We're gonna go ahead and put that aside. So this is our stain palette. Um, the colors are arranged, what we have here, just kind of a, a breakdown. And if you come for anterior course, this is the exact same um, setup that we use. So the glazed liquid, this is that bottle of liquid that we use to moisten the brush, clean our brush off, uh, dilute the stains. This is our glaze paste. That's what makes things shiny and seals everything in. Uh, this is our B body shade, A body shade. So I don't have C and D here. And I have the translucencies kind of broken down, light gray, dark gray, light blue, dark blue. And I'll show you how we would use that. And this is the, the lumen. It's kind of that brightening, higher value color. And this is snow, the non-translucent white. So I'll first take you through a real simple application, what we use for Natalie, which Natalie's case for the 10 restorations, um, I'm putting a little bit of body shade and a little bit of the incisal translucency. And, and it's real simple. On Natalie's case, I actually only used three colors. And so we were able to get a really nice effect from three colors. And I'll show you how we do that. What I'm gonna do first, and this is really important, is you need to moisten the brush. You don't wanna use a dry brush with these colors. So here I'm dipping the brush in the liquid, hydrating the brush. And what I'll do is just kind of spin this around on the tissue paper. This just makes a really nice point on the brush all right, so what we're gonna use, and this is important, especially with this Mio kit, and this is something that I failed to do in my early time of using this, is we have to make sure that the colors are well mixed. And, and this is for each time you use it, at least each day you plan on using. So what we're gonna do, and, and the way that we're gonna apply it, that I'm gonna show you first, I'm applying the colors first, and then we're gonna fire it like that. That allows me, and I, and I find through teaching this process, it's a little bit easier for beginners to put the colors, and, and even for myself, I say it's teaching for beginners, for myself, for complex cases, I like to set the colors first, and then fire it, freeze the colors in place, and then we um, finish everything off with a glaze before any colors applied, just a super thin layer of glazed liquid, standing glazed liquid. This is just to reduce the surface tension. I like to go from margins up and just kind of work our way to that incisal edge. I'm being really careful that it's a very thin layer. I'm not 
I want to make sure we're not pooling this liquid on here, which can make the colors spread around too easily or dilute the colors. It's just simply a very thin layer of the, the stain, or, or sorry, the uh, staining glaze liquid. So after that, what I'm going to do is apply the body shade. So I'll switch back to here. This is the B body shade. This is what we use on Natalie, a little bit of B. The base color that we're using today, this is uh, in the Bruxer aesthetic lineup. This is, and I'm sorry, the Bruxer aesthetic now lineup, the chair side version. This is what we call bleach one, which is about an OM2, OM3 color. Now, I like to use this block on a lot of my aesthetic cases because I like the brightness of the block. Um, it has a real good brightness and value. And we just simply tone down where we want some additional hue or chroma. And so I'm going to show you first, I'm, I'm getting a little dollop of B. I'm going to first put this along the gingiva, the gingival margin. And then from here, I'm going to carry the color to the incisal. That's the body shade. And for Natalie's case, I just put a little bit of B shade and notice how I did carry it all the way through the incisal. I toned down a little bit. And part of that is to, to just fade the color up. Um, I don't like to see a real distinct unless you're maybe doing a tetracycline stain tooth or, or to, a tooth with where the patient has bands of color. You want to be real careful of where you're stopping. So I start applying it near the, the margin and fade this toward the incisal edge. And this alone, and I have made restorations like this alone, this alone is already a great result. This is a polychromatic effect. If all you really needed to do was tone down the brightness or, or lightness of the restoration, this alone is good enough. So from here, I would put it in the oven. Now, this is what it looks like out of the oven. I went ahead and fired one. So this is with those colors, maybe a little lighter of the body shade than uh, what we had, but that's the colors with the incisal and what that looks like. So you can see how that's really on the surface. Now, if we were getting this ready to glaze, um, I'll just quickly show you. I'm not gonna put it on the firing peg just due to time. So I'm gonna go find the glaze and I'm gonna go back since glaze is usually applied to the whole surface, I want to make sure we have the right consistency of the glaze. The right consistency is kind of a honey-like consistency. You don't want it too watery, which is going to pull and be really runny. Uh, so with the glaze, and notice how it self-glazes, the colors do. Uh, but I like to finish this off with a, a layer of glaze. So a really thin coat of the glaze, that's going to do a really nice protective layer. And the right consistency of the glaze is also going to make sure that uh, you don't really have brush strokes coming through the glaze. It's a nice, smooth application. So I would work my way from, and you can go from incisal down to the gingiva. That's actually where I, how I used to start applying it, or in this case, uh, margin up. So there, there's no wrong way as long as you have pretty good coverage. Again, a really light application. And I probably wouldn't need to dilute this down. I see a little bit more streaking uh, than I would really, really like. Application. So this had the, I did a single firing for the color. I did another application for the glaze. And I just want to quickly show you how this a really light use of this. Notice how it's really shiny. Uh, this is what I like to use really light pressure and this is so nice to tone down the heavy shine and I just find this this brings the finish of these staining glaze restorations to a really nice kind of more matte sheen right it's a little bit more not matte uh, satin finish so it, it works really really quickly all right so I'm going to go ahead and switch back. All right. Uh, thank you for your time. I'm going to check in with Helen to see if there are any questions.